G'day there, about the most futile of all the futile nonsense that's gone on during this whole mess is the seemingly never-ending and yet ultimately wasteful attempt by the climate change obsessives to convince us this is all good. How many stories have we had of how the air quality has improved as if to show us or tell us what exactly? I mean, if you do nothing, if you lock everybody away and close an economy, you can improve the environment. Do you suspect anyone above the age of six could not have already worked that out? I mean, is having pollution disappear because we're all indoors really a victory? Reports initially from northern Italy, of course, those satellite photos over China, the vast swathes of northeast of America under fresh, clear skies, our own motorway readings. Yes, indeed. Confirmation that basically, if you revert the world back to 1467, you do, in fact, get fresh air and less pollution. So what? What's the inference? That this is all worth it, is it? That we should have lockdowns more often, that if only we go and crash the economies of the world, we can breathe easy. This is a go-nowhere campaign. Does anyone really think that fresh air is a wondrous new discovery and that all of this virus and its economic and health chaos is well worth the trouble? Most insidious is the call from the unions and the other zealots in an international open letter not to save airlines, not to bail them out, not to offer them assistance, let them fail, let them go under, and in allowing that, we reduce pollution. Isn't that the most extraordinary thing? And in presumably being serious about the call, they in a single move expose themselves for who they really are, economic wreckers. How do they propose the hundreds of thousands of airline employees make a living, eh, or don't they care? How do they propose we travel and move freight and do business, or don't they care? The answer is, of course, they don't care. And in that revelation is the danger of who they are and what they believe. They are single issue nutters who will wreck and destroy anything and everything simply in order to achieve their sole aim. The smart thing, of course, would be to have sympathised, to have stayed quiet, to have not tried to score cheap and ultimately disastrous points at a time of great hardship, of great suffering and uncertainty. But oh, they couldn't help themselves. Well, they lose. Because out the other side of this, who's going to forget the self-absorbed venal narcissism that they've put on display? Not me.